Christopher Columbus is going to help me make the case today that the way in which we can inject life and vitality and fun back into the study of history is to read the primary sources, those documents that are written by the actors themselves. And so we're going to read some extracts from Christopher Columbus Journal and uh, then share parts of his letter to the King and Queen of Spain. Uh, so let me tell you first a little bit about um, Christopher Columbus' life. He was born in Italy in 1451. He went to the sea as a teenager. He said, I went to sea from the most tender age and have continued in a sea life to this day. Whoever gives himself up to this art wants to know the secrets of nature here below. It is more than 40 years that I have been thus engaged. Wherever anyone has sailed, there I have sailed. Uh, there you get a little bit of the personality of Columbus, in which we're going to find out a little more in just a minute. He almost died in 1476 when he was attacked by French pirates. Uh, his ship was burned, and he had to swim ashore uh, into Portugal. He settled there. He married, had a son, uh, became a chart maker, studied Portuguese navigation, and uh, began to sell the idea around Europe, uh, unfortunately to no avail, of a trip to India by a western route. Um, his proposition, uh, he, is, he is tailored for it. He has gained knowledge of the Atlantic currents flowing east and west from the Canary Islands. Um, he believed that sailing west would be a quicker and safer route. Um, however, he seriously misjudged the distance uh, between the Canary Islands and Japan, which he thought was 2,300 miles, and is actually 12,200, just, just a little off. He proposed a three-ship voyage uh, of discovery. He sh proposed it to uh, Italy, to Portugal, uh, to Spain, and Spain had rejected it, but they kept him on retainer until the war with the uh, Moors was completed in Granada, Grenada, and then shortly after the monarchs agreed to the expedition. So he got his funding. Uh, he bought uh, three ships. Um, one, the Santa Maria, is a bigger ship. Uh, you can see some of its makeup in the pictures here. And then he had two smaller, faster vehicles, uh, the Pinta and the Nina, and they were caravels. And uh, you get a sense of the danger of being at sea on this trip, uh, because in his journals, uh, he records for us uh, some of his suspicions about uh, how the Pinta came to be damaged. And uh, so we'll read about that in a minute. And then along the way, he starts recording after a while two sets of numbers in his logbook on the distance traveled each day um, so that he can keep peace with the sailors who realize they're getting farther and farther away from home. So let's take a look at his, uh, his journal for a minute. Let me just read at the beginning... Uh, his description, the opening paragraph about uh, how he begins his journal, and then he goes on to a daily discussion. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, whereas most Christian, high, excellent, and powerful princes, king and queen of Spain and of the islands of the sea, are sovereigns, this present year, 1492, after your highnesses had terminated the war with the Moors reigning in Europe, the same having been brought to an end in the great city of Granada, where on the second day of January this present year, I saw the royal banners of your highnesses planted by force of arms upon the towers of the Alhambra, which is the fortress of that city, and saw the Moorish king come out of the gate of the city, kiss the hands of your highnesses and of the prince my sovereign. And in the present month, in consequence of the information which I had given your highnesses respecting the countries of India and of a prince called the Great Khan, which in our language signifies King of Kings, how at many times he and his predecessors had sent to Rome soliciting instructors who might teach him our most holy faith, 
and the Holy Father had never granted his request, whereby great numbers of people were lost, believing in idolatry and doctrines of perdition. Your Highnesses, as Catholic Christians and princes who love and promote the Holy Christian faith, and are the enemies of the doctrine of Mohammed, and of all idolatry and heresy, determined to send me, Christopher Columbus, to the above countries, to the above-mentioned countries of India, to see the said princes, people, and territories, and to learn their disposition and the proper method of converting them to our holy faith. And furthermore directed that I should proceed, not proceed by land to the east as is customary, but instead by a westerly route. Right, so there's his beginning, his uh, recording of who this journal will eventually be for. And uh, he is talking about how he came to take on this task. He mentions uh, the need for uh, raising money to be um, another crusade against the, the Moors. Uh, he talks about uh, going to India in order to... Um, finally take the doctrine of Christianity to uh, those leaders in India who had been requesting uh, missionaries to come and tell them that news. Uh, his letter goes on. He talks about uh, some of the sabotage. This is a note from August 6th. The rudder of the Caravel Pinta became loose, being broken or unshipped. It was believed that this happened by the contrivance of Gomez, Ra Gomez Rascon and Christopher Quintero, who were on board the Caravel because they disliked the voyage. The Admiral says he had found them in an unfavorable disposition before setting out. So there you are, some of the danger. Um, and then he goes on later on, he writes on September 9th, I sailed this day 19 leagues and determined to count less than the true number that the crew might not be dismayed if the voyage should prove long. So there we have some of the mischief of the, uh, uh, the damaging of the Pinta. We have dual log books. And then we get this description uh, that comes up of the people who would greet him. So the Mina is the first one to see land, and uh, she shoots off a cannon, hoists a flag, and uh, lets the others know that she has seen land, uh, but it will take some time before that can be um, confirmed uh, by the other ships. And uh, But they find out who get it, did it first, and then that person will receive a reward from the king and queen of Spain. So that's pretty cool. And then when they get to the land, um, Columbus makes a speech. And this is his words recorded. It says, here follow the precise words of the admiral about the people who came to greet him. As I saw that they were very friendly to us and perceived that they could be much more easily converted to our holy faith by gentle means than by force, I presented them with some red caps and strings of beads to wear upon the neck and many other trifles of small value wherewith they were much delighted and became wonderfully attached to us. Afterwards they came swimming to the boats, bringing parrots, balls of cotton thread, javelins, and many other things which they exchanged for articles we gave them, such as glass beads and hawks bells, which trade was carried on with the utmost good will. But they seemed on the whole to me to be a very poor people. They all go completely naked, even the women, though I saw but one girl. All whom I saw were young, not above thirty years of age, well made with fine shapes and faces, their hair short and coarse like that of a horse's tail, combed toward the forehead, except a small portion which they suffer to hang down behind and never cut. Some paint themselves with black, which makes them appear like those of the canaries, neither black nor white, others with white, others with red, and others with such colors as they can find. Some paint the face and some the whole body, others only the eyes and others the nose. Weapons they have none, nor are acquainted with them, for I showed them swords which they, which they grasp by the blades and cut themselves through ignorance. 
they have no iron, their javelins being without it, and nothing more than sticks having some fish bones or other things at the end. They are all of a good size and stature and handsomely formed. I saw some with scars of wounds upon their bodies, and determined by signs of determined by signs um what was true of them. They answered me in the same way, and then there came people from other islands in the neighborhood who endeavored to make prisoners of them and defended themselves. I thought then and still believe that these were from the continent. It appears to me that the people are ingenious and would be good servants, and I am of opinion that they would very readily become Christians, as they appear to have no religion. They very quickly learn such words as are spoken to them. If it please our Lord, I intend at my return to carry home six of them to your highnesses, that they may learn our language. I saw no beasts in the land, nor any sort of animals, except parrots. These are the words of the Admiral. Don't you like it? Uh, you can just get into uh, the the drama as you're coming across and the trip is taking longer than required. The joy of landing and the seeing of uh, people coming to greet him and this man's um, description then of what that uh, meeting uh, group was like and uh, what he hopes for them in the future. So I think you can see a little bit of the personality of Columbus that comes out as well. Columbus eventually made four trips uh, back and forth to the New World. Uh, we just read about the first one, uh, but there will be three more. He will also write a letter to the King and Queen of Spain um, in which he talks, it's it's curious, It's it talks about, uh, apparently he thinks that gold will be found everywhere. And uh, so he writes about the need to set up cities uh, in which a notary will live. And those cities will be the places where you take the gold, you get it stamped, you get it taxed. And then that gold will be uh, portioned to you uh, and to the king and queen of Spain, make sure, make, assuring that they get their share um, as the... Um, the money that would come from this expedition. Uh, so uh, Columbus even writes that at one point he thinks maybe we should prohibit looking for gold in order that we might get some other things done that accompany civilization. If we're all out looking for gold all day, how do we build a town? How do we garden? How do we put together things for food and clothing and shelter? You gotta manage those things. And then he has instructions in there. If it's all right with the king and the queen, he shares how we will get the gold transferred safely. That is the royal share. We'll get it from point A to point B. And uh, he's got a very specific detail about how that should be done. All in all, we have some really good documents that tell us about the character of Christopher Columbus, uh, what his goals are for coming, uh, what he, from his perspective, is looking at when he arrives. And uh, all in all, then, this trip, uh, let's see, here is uh, his trip to the New World. And uh, you can see it will not be too long what, uh, 14 years after he discovers the New World, that he will eventually die in Spain. Uh, he was arrested after his third trip uh, because of poor administration, um, and he was accused of some things along the way, and uh, so uh, not everything ended swimmingly for Christopher Columbus, nor for his uh, the lands that he discovered. Uh, so we have an interesting story here of Columbus and the exchange that happened with the New World. Um, what the Europeans sent to the Americas and introduced into the Western world is horses, coffee, uh, sugar cane, all of those coming from Europe and brought here. And then the things that were here that ended up going back, uh, potatoes, tomatoes and corn, and then 
unfortunately, new diseases went both ways. Uh, diseases that Europeans were not used to, diseases that the New World was not used to, and as a result, uh, there was diseases that traded as well as goods and uh, food. So, that's a little bit of the background of Christopher Columbus, and I think you would enjoy uh, reading some of his journals, uh, reading that correspondence back and forth to the King and Queen of Spain. It just gives real color uh, to what was happening when the Western world is founded by Christopher Columbus.